Hey humans, how you all doing? It's me, George Three, and I'm here to tell you about something special. A fan of mine messaged me saying it's their birthday and they wanted me to do a video response to a video they saw. And I decided, hey, sure, why not? It's your birthday, I will do it. Happy birthday, buddy. The title is called Atheism is Stupid. Okay, here, uh, down the street, just thank you. Isn't that what usually happens when you're walking down the street? You're just thinking. Just thinking random thoughts. I wonder what random thought you were thinking. Like how foolish it is to be an atheist. How foolish it is to be an atheist. Wow. I wonder why that is. Maybe it's because of your misunderstanding of atheism, maybe? I'm just making an assumption. I don't know. I haven't exactly uh, remembered every single instance of this video. Um... Let me define atheist, because I, I guess sometimes we say atheist or we think atheist. Maybe people's definitions aren't always the same. That's a good point. That's actually something I actually agree with. Many people do have different definitions of it, but mainly the definition of it, lack of belief in any god or gods due to lack of evidence or lack of conceptual understanding of what even a god is. When I say atheist, I mean someone who doesn't believe that there's a supreme being or God that created all this. I agree. For the most part, at least. But let's watch. That created the sun, the moon, the stars. The moon, the stars. Okay. The galaxy, the trees, fishes, giraffes. Yep, yep. There, there, was a, there, there was a lot of animals and fauna and stuff. Yep. But what does that have to do with a God? Just because those things exist doesn't mean that a god exists. Because these things can arrive via natural processes. And the reason why I'm saying this is because there's evidence of that, which is, well, obviously. Zebras, my eyes, ears, nose, all. Oh boy. This whole thing again. The eyes are so complex, how, they can't just randomly appear here. Oh boy. We got another logical fallacy. An argument of ignorance. All that stuff. All that stuff. Maybe there might be a natural process. I don't know, maybe evolutionary processes, maybe? I think they think they just fell together. Well, no, that's not what an atheist thinks. An atheist is somebody who doesn't believe in any gods or gods. An atheist has no opinion on anything else because it's literally just a lack of belief in a god or gods. That's it. There's nothing unifying atheism in any way, shape, or form. Uh, there's no opinion about it except I don't believe in a god. It's like not believing in unicorns. Uh, somebody who doesn't believe in a unicorn, uh, just because they say they don't believe in unicorns, that means that uh, they believe that cotton candy doesn't exist, even though there's clear the evidence of cotton candy existing. And it has nothing to do with it. But, okay, let's continue. And then you might have your people that say, well, oh, atheists don't think that. I mean, atheists, I just don't believe that the god of the, the fairy tale god in the sky. Uh, that you believe in. Well, no. If you're an atheist, A means not. Theist means God. The Theo means God or deity. Okay, well, uh, A means not. Theist means God. In a way, he's correct. Atheism means the lack of belief in any God of gods. The A is not uh, non-belief or non it's negating, pretty much. And uh, and you have theism. Theism means belief in a god. It's not god itself. It's belief in a god. Some type of god, whether it's multiple gods or if it's one god. Well, DA usually just negates all that stuff. Like you have agnosticism, and then you have gnosticism. Agnostic agnosticism is the belief is the belief that we don't know if there was a god or god, or if there are any gods at all. And they might be willing to believe if there is evidence. Just like an atheist. I'm an agnostic atheist. And a gnostic is somebody who believes that they know that there is a god. While a theist is somebody who believes in a god, and an atheist is somebody who doesn't believe in a god. Hope that helps. Which means you don't believe in a god. How foolish is that? Why is it foolish to believe in a god? I, I would like an answer to that, because... I see no reason for it to be foolish to not believe in a god. You just don't know. It's like uh, not believing in, like I said, unicorns. You don't know, 
if unicorns exist or not, and you have no reason to believe it because you have no available evidence to conclude that uh, point of belief. So it's not really foolish. Now, what's foolish is believing on things that you have no reason to believe, that you have no justification or any real justification besides uh, some type of emotional response to it. Um, an atheist is someone who thinks that, well, they, all this just came together out of nothing. Nothing. Well, again, an atheist is not somebody who believes that everything just came out of nothing. They have no reason to believe in a god, and so there's, they don't have any uh, opinion about that. You don't know what an atheist There are many atheists out there who believe in things that are like completely different from the typical scientific view of uh, the Big Bang and shit like that. Like Buddhism, for example. Which, by the way, I kind of hope is real. But that's not a story. Or some Big Bang or some arbitrary uh, event. And you just came together. Just came to arbitrary event. That's You're pretty much talking about the watchmaker argument. Uh which is the argument of, let's say you go to a beach and you see and you see a watch on that beach. Somebody using the watchmaker argument, somebody who believes in a god, uh, would usually sit, would point to this watch and say, "Look at this. This is so beautiful and so complex. This could not have come from natural means. It must have been created." Now the problem is that the person who believes that believes that every single part of that beach was created, despite the fact that. Again, there's really no evidence, but they believe it was created. So therefore, just looking at one thing uh, that was created, which is a uh, watch, everything. They're looking at million, like billions of watches all at once, and they're just picking up one watch, watch and say and calling it created, and ignoring everything else. That we have no purpose here, or that we cannot know our purpose. They suggest that too. Yeah, we're here and we we have all these things, but I mean, how can we really know? for certain why we're here or who made us. We cannot know our purpose. Ugh, boy. Yeah, no, that, again, that's not what an atheist is. They don't have any opinion about, about purpose or anything. My opinion about purpose, purpose is w of what you make of it, pretty much. You give yourself a purpose. Uh, purpose of life, pretty much, is just to continue to grow and evolve and survive. Purpose of air... It doesn't really have a purpose. It serves a purpose and a function for us and other living beings, but it doesn't exactly have an actual purpose itself. It's just there due to uh, chemical reactions, thanks to natural processes that we can actually comprehend, at least barely, and demonstrate with some validity. Who made us? It's unfaithfulness. They don't want to believe. Questioning unfaithfulness. Questioning why we're here and all that stuff means that it's a bad thing, you're saying? Why is questioning a bad thing? It just doesn't make any sense. The reason they don't want to believe, the Bible says... The reason they don't want to believe... They don't want to believe, wow, no. An atheist is not an atheist because they don't want to believe. An atheist is somebody who does not believe in a god because they see no fucking reason to believe in a god. Sorry if I'm getting emotional. And they hated the life. They don't want to acknowledge God. They don't want to acknowledge Jesus or God. But it's just ridiculous that people keep saying that they, they that they just want to sin, that they don't that they just want to uh, they just want to fake not believing in a God, and it's just ridiculous as shit. Like I'm not an atheist because I want to sin. I'm not an atheist because I want to uh, not believe. I'm an atheist simply because I see no reason to believe. That's it. If I walked up to this person and asked him if he believed in leprechauns. He'd say no. Most likely, I can guarantee you, he'd probably say no. And if that's the case, I would say, uh, you're foolish for not believing. And I would say what he just said. Oh, you don't believe in leprechauns because you don't want to believe in leprechauns. Oh, God. Oh, boy. The Bible says. Here we go. A book full of unsubstantiated claims made by people who weren't writing a collection of stories together. That it was written by people many, many centuries apart from each other, none of whom knew each other, most of whom were just making shit up. People who knew nothing about the existence of uh, Pluto or atoms or uh, the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell. 
uh, lighters or anything like that. These are people who barely knew anything about what we know today, thanks to technology and science and everything. The thing At first, let's say, let's, let's say God, um, because they know if they have, to, if they acknowledge God, they'll have to be. These are you discrediting because of your faithfulness, which is ridiculous. For the came for Jesus, the light came into this world. Jesus, the light came into this world. Can you prove it? Because all you have is a collection of stories uh, bundled up into one book that's one decades apart from the actual event, and who didn't see any of it and didn't even know anybody who was actually there who talked to people, second hand people, people who heard about it after somebody else told them about it. That's who they were talking to, more or less, pretty much. Most of the peep gospel writers were, were born, I think, uh, the first one was, I can't remember exactly which one was written first at the moment, offhand. But I do know that it was written about, like, 70 years after Jesus' after Jesus' supposed resurrection. And, and the people love darkness. They love sin. We love darkness. We love sin. What is darkness to you? When I think of darkness, I think of absence of light. You might take it in a metaphorical sense, but I am, and I get it. I understand it's a simplistic way of thinking about it, but you're an adult in the 21st century with technology and uh, available that nobody else was able to obtain in the past. And you're talking like a child. Granted, I could be childish. Of course I could be childish. We're all children at heart. But still, they don't want to acknowledge God. And if this is somebody who doesn't fucking believe in a God. So until you can actually demonstrate your God, then we might believe. Now, worshipping that God is a different story. It all depends. Depends on the atheist. And it also depends on the God. Like if it's your God, the God of the Bible, Yahweh, Jesus, fuck no. I would never worship that son of a bitch. If you want to know why. Read the Bible. You'll understand then. Now it's Jesus. Well, God first. Let's say, let's, let's say God. Um. In your point of view, Jesus is God. So why would you just not... You could just use those words interchangeably. There's really no difference. God, they'll have to be morally accountable to him. Because they... Morally accountable to him. I don't have to be morally accountable to him just because I acknowledge him. I don't have to be morally accountable to Trump just because I acknowledge him. I mean, your argument doesn't really make any sense. Because he's powerful, that means I have to agree with him? I don't have to agree with a fucking tyrant. Realize that we have a conscience. We all have a conscience. And it's God given. Yes, we do have a conscience. A conscience, based on our brain, which is a physical thing, a physical object in this physical world that has chemical reactions occurring inside of it, causing electrical currents to run through my brain, causing my consciousness. That we can explain via scientific methods. We all know that lying is... It's God-given. For one, can you prove you God? Two, how do you know it's God-given? Even if there is a God, how do you know he gave us this? You, you don't know. You're just making guesses. You're just making assumptions based on an old book that somebody probably forced down your throat from the age of like seven or some shit like that. Or three or something like that. It's wrong. Stealing is wrong. Murder. Rape. Okay, yeah. Uh, stealing can be wrong depending on the context. Now, if you're starving and you haven't eaten anything and you have family that hasn't eaten anything and there's a loaf of bread over there and the person that has a loaf of bread over there has abundancy of bread that so much so that just losing one bread, won't they won't notice it at all because of the fact that they throw so much bread away because it gets uh, bad and spoils a lot. It gets bad and spoils. I say, go ahead and steal that fucking bread. In fact, steal as, steal as much bread as you want. Murder, rape, and all that is... Yes, murder and rape is wrong, but not because your God says so. Because it's wrong. Because it hurts people. Because it causes individuals pain and suffering. And that's something that I do not like. Unlike your God, who likes the smell of burning flesh and is okay with human sacrifice. And if that's the case, Jesus was a human sacrifice. Wrong. It's in us. It's ingrained in us. It's in us, and it's ingrained in us. No, it's not ingrained in us. You were taught this. You were indoctrinated. You sound like somebody who was indoctrinated in this stuff. You were not born with this. You were taught this. 
Just like racists who weren't born racist, they were taught to be racist. Um, but we try to say, if we say that if there's a God, then we know that, oh dang, I'm going to have to be a, accountable to him morally. Um, you don't have to be accountable to him morally. What is, who says this? Where are you getting your information from? So people try to, try, they try to either dismiss the notion that there's a God altogether, or they try to, try to bend, uh, they try to make an idol God that they're comfortable with. They are comfortable with. An idol God that they're comfortable with. That doesn't make any sense because this video is talking about atheism and you're talking about atheism right now, more or less, and atheists and stuff. And you're saying that they have an idol. If an atheist is worshiping something, they're not an atheist now, are they? If, they, if, they, if, if I use this as my idol, am I an atheist because I'm worshiping this? In a sense, I could be. But, you know, most people who worship things aren't atheists. They're usually a theist of some kind. I also had this. Hey, well, God's a forgiving God. They, he... God's a forgiving God. And yes, he does. Are you sure about that? Because he wouldn't, he's letting billions of people burn right now in hell. For not believing. Or being in the wrong religion. Is that forgiving? According to your theology anyway. Your specific theology. That doesn't sound like a forgiving God. A forgiving God doesn't need sacrifice of any kind. Like he did with Jesus. Or like with the story of Jephthah. If you want to know what that story is. I might do a video on it next time. But in short... Prayed to God to win a battle, and he said that he would sacrifice the first thing that comes to greet him if he won the battle. And guess what was the first thing that greeted him? Not one of his cattle, not one of his sheep, not even one of his slaves. And yes, he owned many slaves. And he also owned servants, which are distinguished between the two in that story, by the way. It was his daughter. His daughter was the first thing to greet him. He went through with the sacrifice like six months afterwards. I just wanted to pause there because it's just saddening to think about that. that. It's just saddening to think about it. He knows my heart. And yes, he does. We all have a sinful heart. It's full of deceit and lust. My heart pumps blood. It's not full of anything else but blood. If it was full of anything else, I wouldn't be here speaking. I'd be dead. Now, I understand you're saying it in a metaphorical sense, but... You're doing a poor job at it. And, and pride and envy. And they don't want to acknowledge the fact that God is also a good and just God. And because he's good. He... Acknowledge the fact that he's a good and just God. Prove your God exists. Prove that your God is a good and just God. The God that you worship, which is the God of the Bible, is not a just God. And it can be easily proven by reading the Bible. Just to give it short, a short little summary, I'm not going to list everything. I'm just going to give it little bits of things that I can remember. He banishes two people from a garden of Eden for eating fruit and lying about it. He drowns the entire planet, including bees, turtles, octopuses, sea life, and plants and birds. Because some men were not good. He destroyed two whole towns because they were sinful. He destroyed an entire tower, reaching the sky, reaching the heavens. And messed up everybody's sense of language. He had his own son die on a cross. He must punish sin. People don't like to acknowledge that fact. They like to pick and choose uh, the God they want to believe in. Speaking of picking and choosing, you probably will pick and choose the verses that, you know, you're in favor of. I'm assuming you're an African American, and if so, you're a Christian African American, which puzzles me because you're part of a religion that helped enslave your ancestors. It says in the Bible, in one of the many 625 plus laws that Moses laid down, thanks to God, it states that you can own slaves, the heathen that surround you, that they are your money, that they are your property, that you can buy, sell, and trade, and even beat them as long as they don't die within a couple days, and the person will not, and the owner will not suffer any punishment. And there's much more than that, and people like to make excuses, but that's not a part of this video. But I'm just ranting. <laughs> the God they want to believe in. But if, but if you want to believe the God of the Bible, the, the God of the Bible says, the soul that sins shall die. The God of the Bible also says that the mustard seed is the world's smallest seed. And 
the orchard seed is actually the world's smallest seed. So, uh, yeah. If you, if you, if you're a sinner, you don't have Christ in your heart. If you don't repent of your sins and trust in Jesus, you will die and go to hell. Oh, a threat. Now you're threatening people because if they don't believe you're going to threaten them. I recently got a message uh, an hour ago on Instagram about somebody who is from the religion of Islam. And they were calling me, um, they were telling me that they want to bring me good tidings and a warning. And eventually I got them, coaxed them down. I pretty much annoyed them to the point where they like got mad and called me a piece of meat. If you want to see the screenshots, that'll be like right around here. But anyway, he wanted to know where I live too. And I'm like, what, you going to fucking beat me up or something? What the fuck? I've called his prophet a pedophile because he is one. But that's not the point. That's just what the God of the Bible says. So, I mean, no sugar coating or anything. No sugar coating it or anything. If you're a sinner, you got to repent. If you're a sinner, you got to repent. Stop threatening people, jackass. You got to say, God, I'm sorry for my sin. Um, I, I turn away from it. I'm sorry. You got to actually be sorrowful. Uh, you have to go through... <gasps> this sorrowful uh, conviction and repentance. I don't have to be sorry. I don't have to be sorry at all. Sorry for what? Existing? For being created the way he made me? He controls, if, if your God is real, then he controls every single thing that goes on in existence, including what I think. So therefore, I have no control of my thought, and I have no control of what I choose to believe, making your God controlling my belief system. Therefore, he's sending me to hell. If I died right now, I would be going to hell. Thanks to him. Thank you, God. You can't just say I'm sorry. You have to really be sorry. I'm not going to be sorry for existing. No fucking way. I'm not going to say sorry for existing, God, when you're the one who created me. You're the one who steered my life into this direction and made me believe these things based on the available evidence you would let me not see. And you have to turn from your sin and trust in Jesus. I don't want to trust in somebody who always lies. He lies about mustard seeds being the smallest seeds. He lies about uh, the people who are his disciples never tasting death. He lies about coming again soon and within their lifetimes. He lied about so many freaking things. You'll be safe. I will be safe. And I hope you're safe too. And I will not threaten you with any type of punishment. Unlike what you're doing because I don't believe what you believe. Just because you don't believe what I believe doesn't mean I want you to be uh, in any pain or anything. Even on a subconscious level. Okay, so thank you for watching this video. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Share this video. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. I'm George Zui. Subscribe. Have a great day. Happy birthday, Malia. Take it easy. Hey humans, don't forget to follow me.